It's called foreshadowing. Look it up. This was a really good year for films if you were willing to look around a little bit, but even the mainstream fare this year was overall much better than last. As with my worst video, to put it into perspective a bit, while both Rush and 12 Years a Slave would have been surefire in my top 12 this year, I'm really not as sure about my number 3 pick, Pacific Rim, which might have only made honorable mention, believe it or not. But speaking of, let's get those out of the way at the start of the video this time. Fury. Shia LaBeouf was actually watchable, and I can give this no higher praise than that. Seriously though, this is a very engrossing war film that puts you right in the tank. A Walk Among the Tombstones. A film with Liam Neeson that relies on actual suspense and him using his intelligence rather than just beating up people. Sign me up, although I warn you that this is not a film for the squeamish. Chef. Do not go into this film on an empty stomach. This is a film about a chef rediscovering his love of food and his family, and this is easily the best food porn movie I have ever seen. I ate before I watched this, and I was still famished coming out of this because the food just looks so good on screen. A Most Wanted Man Philip Seymour Hoffman's lead role swan song is a surprisingly tense spy thriller. Although I think a few scenes were left in solely because he was in them, this is still a very solid if very unhappy film. And finally, John Wick and The Drop. Both are mob movies, the first being an action film, the second being a suspense drama, but that's not why I grouped them together. I did that because of the very important lesson that both of them impart. Do not, I repeat again, do not hurt a puppy. Either Keanu Reeves or Tom Hardy will make you pay if you do much to the delight of the audience. And now, on to the list proper. Number 12, Gone Girl. I showed up at the theater in town that was showing Left Behind, and I was thinking, you know, I can put up with this, I'll just torture myself, maybe people will find it funny when I talk about it, but once I got to the theater, I said, no, 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 no. Nobody deserves to watch that film. Well, don't do this to yourself. Go see a good film instead, and boy am I ever glad I did, because this is the one I went to go see. The first act, well, still good, had me wondering what all the hype was about, and thinking there, yeah, this is alright, mm -hmm. yeah, something's bound to happen here, and sure enough, once that second act hit, hits, and Rosamund Pike showed up, I was just hooked into this film, and I haven't seen all the Best Actress nominees yet in their films, but... I was actually really surprised when Rosamund Pike did not win Best Actress at the Golden Globes, and damn was she ever good, and this film, it just gets so much right. It does feel long, but honestly, I was engrossed all throughout it. Number 11, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Andy Serkis is absolutely amazing here, and it's a shame the Academy has decided not to even consider him for a nomination. The story here is honestly kind of flawed, as he can predict most of the turns, but the visualizations of the apes is so engrossing that I can overlook it and just be wowed at the spectacle of it all. Number 10. 22 Jump Street. I saw this without even seeing the first film, and I could tell right away that this was the most cliched, obvious sequel they could have made. However, it's fully aware of that fact, it even says that it's the most cliched and unoriginal thing they could have made, and so it uses that knowledge to its full effect for one of the most consistently funny comedies I've ever seen, probably the funniest thing since, oh, Hot Fuzz, made all the more impressive because it doesn't rely on crude or gross-out humor at all. I had at least a steady chuckle going throughout this entire thing, several very solid laughs, and one gut-busting moment where I swear the laughter of the audience was overshadowing even the soundtrack of the film. We were laughing so hard at this one particular scene. I did watch the original over the Christmas break, and having watched it, I honestly prefer this one. This is, was just great. Number 9. Edge of Tomorrow. Even though this still made 200 million worldwide, you know, 50-50 domestic and worldwide split, I still consider this one of the most underviewed movies of the year. Maybe people were turned off by another Tom Cruise sci-fi film, but 
This one is much more clever and actually doesn't get have him in his typical hero role. He actually starts out as kind of this coward who's forced into this situation. And it's only as because there's a time repeating gimmick here that he learns to overcome it. And it's very interesting to see and it pulls it off so well. You're, nev you're never bombarded with the same scenes over and over and over again. You, it's smart enough to space things out. It doesn't show you everything that happened at the, in the first go-round so that you can see new stuff every single time he repeats. And this is just one of the best sci-fi films, original sci-fi films, I've seen in ages. The final act does devolve a bit into the action cliche parts, but uh, not by no means undoes the brilliant work that's earlier on, and what a welcome surprise to see Emily Blunt as a legitimate action star. She's not the damsel in distress type. She is carrying a lot of the action in this film, and she does it beautifully. I want to see her in more action st stuff. Number 8. X-Men Days of Future Past. It is so refreshing to see an X-Men film that doesn't concentrate solely on Wolverine, instead being much more of an ensemble cast with some solid performances from everyone. It dwelled much more on the relationship between Xavier and Magneto and how they both relate to Mystique. If I have one complaint about this film, it's that Quicksilver needed more screen time. But that one scene in that kitchen might just be my favorite ever scene in any superhero film ever. That was just beautiful. It's almost worth the price of admission just to see that one scene. Number 7. Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Again, it was nice to see a bit of a fresh take on the superhero film genre, with this being much more of a covert operations or subterfuge film rather than following the standard action formula, at least until you get to the last act, but you can kind of forgive it because of what came before it was so good. Uh, Black Widow came into her own, Falcon was a nice addition, and that, that shield might just be my favorite uh, Marvel weapon now. Yes, sorry Mjolnir, I want one of those shields. Number six, Whiplash. We're now getting to Oscar contender territory with this list. Uh, so there, there's a bit of more foreshadowing about what might be coming up. I went into this film with very low expectations despite hearing extremely positive reports about this film. How interesting could a film be about drumming? The answer is very. A, a minor subplot involving Miles Teller's girlfriend is the only quibble I have, but the real highlight here is J.K. Simmons giving hands down, hands down, one of the best performances I have ever seen on film. He plays a jazz conductor who I swear at times is channeling that drill sergeant from Full Metal Jacket. It's absolutely riveting. And of course if you like jazz you're going to love the soundtrack of this film. And that final scene? Oh, just superbly done! Loved it! Number five. The Grand Budapest Hotel. Delightfully quirky, Funny, and with a few serious moments and cameos galore, this film is Wes Anderson through and through. You could probably show anyone a scene from this film and they'll say, yep, that's a Wes Anderson film. It doesn't matter. This is probably his best film to date. The sets are gorgeous. The acting's wonderful. The pace is just right. Overall, this was just such a refreshing film to take a break from the old blockbusters and romantic comedies that have been dominating cinema lately. Number four, The Imitation Game. I can quibble a bit here about how the CGI representation of some of the battle scenes that they showed were a bit cartoonish, but since that wasn't the focus of the film, I can forgive it. Unlike The Captive, this film ably demonstrates how to use a time-shifting theme correctly, and Benedict Cumberbatch outstandingly portrays the highly wronged Alan Turing. And Keira Knightley refreshingly plays a role where her beauty is not central to her character. As a computer science major, this film hit home with me. Number three, Birdman. While this may not be my favorite film of the year, this is my pick for best picture of the year. It has one of the most unique visual styles I have ever seen in a film, and with a percussion-only soundtrack that feels like it's a part of the film itself. And honestly, shame on the Academy for not even considering this for best original score. I'm an amateur stage actor, as many of you know, 
and this really makes you feel like you are backstage at a play and has some smart and not overdone commentary on the current state of film as well. While all the actors are spectacular, Edward Norton and Michael Keaton are especially outstanding, with Keaton being my choice for best actor, and honestly, Norton only loses out because of J.K. Simmons. Okay, this was probably too much of a hint as to what my two favorite films of the year are. Oh well, what are, we, what are you going to do? Number two, The Lego Movie. I do not understand why this was not nominated for Best Animated Feature. I, I, I don't get it. This was by far the best animated film I saw all year. I, I guess my parents didn't like it all that much, but who cares? Who cares? We disagree all the time. They like some really bad stuff. Anyway, sorry. For me, this just brought out my inner child and hit that sweet spot of nostalgia and fun that just continues to resonate with me. The animation's lovely, the voice acting is spot on, and for what is essentially a feature-length advertisement for toys, it is surprisingly smart and carries a meaningful message. No surprise here. Number one, Guardians of the Galaxy. A film for which I had zero expectations at the beginning of the year. This is quite honestly the most fun I've had in a theater in ages. Somehow this accomplished a miracle in taking five much lesser known Marvel characters and making the audience care about them, all in a two hour film essentially accomplishing what the Avengers took six films to do. And if you don't like Rocket Raccoon and Groot, you are dead to me, you hear me? Dead! Uh, of course, how could you overlook the soundtrack of this film? This is excellent. We are Groot. Please discuss my picks below, include your own list, and I'll talk to you folks later.